changes, um, evaluative data about the change and review the change and decide what to do next. And then the whole cycle starts again. So if we compare this with the other one, actually, there are no two different. Uh, basically, the second one uh, has more steps. But obviously, how people go about action research uh, will depend on the context again, will depend on how they collect data, etc. What is important here is that this is a cycle and it never stops and we need to collect data uh, properly uh, and uh, we need to plan for further uh, ne for next steps, etc. Um, well, uh, research questions. This is a very key issue in research in general, especially in um, uh, qualitative research, I would say. Um, but what is important here is that once we have uh, detected a problem, once we have uh, assumed that there is something that we would like to change as teachers, uh, or the problem or situation which needs intervention, then, for example, my students lack motivation to learn the language, they don't do their homework and have serious discipline problems. This is, uh, well, I would say that in this example we have many issues, obviously, but uh, and we might, but they are all together some, somehow. I mean, because maybe discipline problems come before, uh, or sorry, as a result of, of their lack of motivation. Maybe if they were motivated, they would be engaged in the classroom and we would have less discipline problems, etc. So, uh, this is, uh, I guess, for many teachers, this is a very common situation in the classroom. So we can very well post a problem that can be how can motivation be improved so that students feel more encouraged and they develop their language skills better or more um, rapidly, etc. So we have to find research questions that we can actually measure later on, apply in the classroom and that are actually relevant to us, not next door. It's not relevant, it's in our context. Um, I'm going to just briefly talk about two studies. Uh, this is by Witte 2007, uh, and this has to do with motivation, and that's why I've chosen it. Uh, and this uh, is an action research study. Um, she um, well, this is not in an EFL context. This is not actually in, 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 uh, in uh, uh, English as a foreign language. This is in the, in the United States. And uh, the teacher was teaching writing in English, of course. Uh, but what is interesting here is that she was teaching in two different modes. Or she, she was teaching writing in a way, and then she discovered that the students, one of her students, for example, uh, was not interested at all and she was not writing and she was not doing anything in class and actually she became a problem. And one day, she uh, just by talking to her parents, she discovered that this student was writing loads of things on the internet. She was uh, using blogs to write, and she had her own blog, she was writing poetry, she was writing essays, she was writing masses of things, and she was writing very well, which she wasn't doing in the classroom. So actually what she did is that she implemented a project and started getting students uh, having their own blogs and gave them assignments that they had to write on their blogs and started observing the results of this. So actually what she did, if we look at the cycle again, is that she observed a problem, she evaluated the situation, she made a change and then she started observing what was happening and implemented again and so forth and so on. Um, so, the result of her research showed that students f uh, feel more encouraged and thus more motivated and their writing improves uh, and, and so uh, their technological skills. 
So she did all this and uh, actually she wasn't, probably at the beginning, she didn't even know what the results would be. And this is very common of action research because it comes from bottom, from, 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 from the students, from the participants. Another research which also has to do with technology, I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm working a lot with technology, so these are the examples that I'm more familiar with now, um, is by Pinkman, 2006. And she conducted action research among, uh, she was teaching uh, in Japan. Uh, uh, this is not school research. The other one was at school, the, the one that I show, uh, recently uh, just uh, showed uh, one minute ago. Uh, but this is among inter, uh, uh, university students. Uh, she had 15 Japanese students who were learning English, and uh, they were aged between 19 and 21, and she wanted to determine the usefulness, again, of blogs uh, in improving their writing and communication skills. Students were not motivated before, again, motivation is a big issue, <laughs> anyway. And uh, what she did was uh, she gave them questionnaires before starting uh, blogs, the, uh, using blogs to determine uh, uh, students' interests. She wanted to find out how this new, this change, because she observed that the, uh, something was wrong, she wanted to implement a change, she introduced a change, which was, in this case, technology, to make students write in English. Um, and, um, and she wanted to find out what the interests of the students were. Uh, what is interesting in her research is uh, that students were willing to use the blogs not so much to write, but to communicate. So actually, what came out of uh, this action research is that the researcher was expect, uh, the teacher actually, the researcher was expecting one result, and she came out with something completely different. Actually, students wanted to communicate, and that's the way she, they used blogs. So, what I want to uh, show with this is that many times we start with one idea, right? And because of the nature of action research, and because of, of, of this being so exploratory, uh, we come out with something completely different. And this is the value of action research. We don't start with uh, an hypothesis that is preconceived, right? We start trying to find data from our participants, from our students, from the classroom, from what, what, from what we observe. Um, as a result of this, she obviously introduces blogs in her practice more often, and then obviously um, this is a, a, a change that improves her teaching because of what she did, actually. Now, uh, many of these examples are, have to do with re uh, action research that has taken place over one term or one semester. Um, at school, I would say that many times we have more time. We could very well do some uh, more uh, longitudinal research, which, which means that is over a longer period of time, right? With, uh, for example, we start uh, at the beginning of the term and then we continue, e even two years, we can go across and define something that we want to, uh, to investigate and we just do it over a longer period of time. Some of the conclusions, uh, which actually come not only from the literature, but also from my own experience as a teacher, and I think uh, it's very valid to discuss them with you. Um, action research is a reflective process in which the teacher becomes a researcher. We have discussed this already, uh, but I think it's important to emphasize this. Be by becoming a researcher, we mean we are taking our experience in the classroom and making it into something that we can do research on. Making research, or doing research, sorry, means that we will have to be rigorous in what we do. So we are now juggling with two roads. We are we're both teachers and researchers. Um, action research can also be done alone or in collaboration with others. And this is very powerful, I think. Um, 
we, uh, we said before,